Welcome, everybody, to the PCM Podcast. My name is Dorsey Fricall, and this week I'm joined by my co-host, AJ, along with our panel of Dadjob, Vape, Will, Jayway, and Goats. How's it going, everybody? Good, bud. Fantastic. This episode of the PCN Podcast is brought to you by the hashtag AJ Outmoop. For more information, please go to the change.org link that will be in the description. Thank you. So on this week's podcast, we're going to talk about the round of 16 and the quarterfinals of the PCN World Cup, as well as preview the semis and finals. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to go matchup by matchup and kind of talk about it a little bit and then move on. So... Starting with Spain against Egypt in the round of 16, Spain won the first leg 4 to 2, second leg 5 to 1. How was Egypt, babe? I am fortunate it wasn't there for that game, but I watched the stream and Egypt they aren't really weren't really able to get a full lineup in. They just couldn't handle Spain in the end. Yeah, and Spain have definitely been one of the most overpowered teams in the tournament, which we'll get to later, and so I don't think that's a, that was a shock to anyone. In the next game, we had Portugal beating Russia 5-0 in the first leg, which kind of made the second leg, which ended up 3-3. Kind of didn't mean too much. At least Russia was able to go out there and get three goals in the second leg. Now, Portugal did run into some trouble in the next round, but overall, I think a pretty decent showing from them getting to the quarterfinals. I think that's probably about where people expected. So the next game, France beat Switzerland 5-0, and then Switzerland, I think, pretty much just conceded the second one, and they got a walkover, so... France did lose in the next round, but I think France maybe would have hoped to get to at least the semifinals, but I think a, a solid quarterfinal showing, and they were I think they were undefeated going into the quarterfinals until they ran into Australia. And the game I want to talk about, speaking of Australia, is Australia beating Uruguay 3-0 in the first leg of the round of 16, and then Uruguay yeah, yeah. coming back 2-0 in the second leg, almost evening it up. So, AJ, how was, how was those games for you? Oh, man, it was good. I, I, it, was, it was as good as can get for losing. We gave up two penalty kicks rather early in the first game. And well, Australia, they, they yeah, they hammered us down for the most part. We made a late rush in the second game. And for about the last 10 minutes of the second leg, we had a couple chances to tie it up. And just they just didn't go in, man. But we knew they were a good team, and we lost. That's the way it goes. Hats off to Australia. Way to go, guys. Goats, how was their game against Uruguay? Was it a little bit tougher than you maybe expected? I wasn't there for the first game for Uruguay, but I think they weren't expecting as much for uh, what Uruguay did. Mm-hmm. But I know we played the second game, and I think we fucked around because we like uh, underperformed, thinking that they didn't do that good the first game. Why would they do good the second? But yeah, they were a pretty good team. We felt like, well, at least I did it at Uruguay. Like Oates just said, it kind of felt like they opened the door. And once they opened the door a little bit, they couldn't close it. So yeah, we hammered, hammered, hammered still. They didn't break. And what I love is that there were a few blowouts in the first legs of these round of 16 games. And some of the teams you can kind of tell laid down in the second game. And then, But then some teams like Uruguay, you know, they didn't have any quit and they, they showed up and they really made it a game. So it's always good to see. Uruguay is the only team in Group A to be out of the tournament at this point. And they almost upset Australia, so... It really shows you that group of death was, in fact, the group of death. It's real. It is real. So speaking of our boys at Brazil, we were able to draw Denmark 2-2 two to two in the first leg. We were the away team and then got a 1-1 draw in the second leg to go through 3-3 three to three on away goals. I don't think we expected it, but we finally got a lineup that seemed to click. And we had our best night of the tournament against probably the best team we'd played, uh, other than maybe Spain and Morocco. Will and Jay Wade, were you guys a little bit surprised too? Yeah, I would say that the, the first game, but we scored two really, really early on them. And literally it could have been five to zero in the first half. And then we allowed them to get back in the game to make it two to two at the end, which I remember us being really disappointed about. And then in the second game, the pass back missed by the goalie into the post for a uh, own goal. <laughs> it was a nice little capper. I mean, they're a good team, though, and I think Denmark knows that. But once again, the group of death showed because what, what did we finish, third or fourth? And then we beat the top seed. It was a good game, though. Denmark's a good team. For sure. It was a good game. I mean, it was kind of frustrating, you know, from a 
a Brazil standpoint to like having dominated that first game and end up like shipping two goals in you know the last fifteen or twenty minutes, however much time it was, and having to go into that second leg being two two on aggregate. I mean, it just wasn't a good look for us. But they were a really good team. Their attack was especially really good, and they gave us a really strong test. And I'm surprised that we uh, managed to pull through. It was a tight last game, so hats off to Denmark. They were really good in the tournament. Yep, definitely. I think we could have taken more chances in that first game, and then we I think we hit a point in the second half where we kind of started to play nervous, started to play defensive, and invited the pressure, and it's what allowed Denmark to get back into it. They got a 90th-minute equalizer, which really hurt, but we didn't let that get us down too much. We were a little bit fortunate on the goal we got in the third game, but we were able to hold on that last 15-20 minutes under a ton of pressure, and we were able to squeak it out, and you know, beat one of the favorites to win it all. But Denmark could have easily beaten us and gone all the way. So, you know, hats off to them for putting together a good team. And the next matchup is a bit of a blowout. Not much to say really about this. Germany beat Croatia 3-0 in the first leg. And then from what I've heard is they scored one early against Croatia to make it four. Center back for Croatia got a red card and then it just turned into an absolute shit show. And Germany ended up with double digits in that game. Jesus. 11 goals. Well done to Germany for, you know, putting the foot down, but that's that's really embarrassing for Croatia. That sounds like a game that may decide, like, the golden boot. Kind of interesting. They're actually, it's not like there's one Germany player who's just, like, 20 goals or something. Oh, okay. That's good, then. So, anyway, second to last matchup in the round of 16, Belgium beat Japan 3 nothing in the first game, and then the second game was a 3-3 to draw. I'm impressed by Japan. Japan was the team that got together late, was able to get out of the group and, you know, in fourth place and put up a, a decent fight. And then Belgium, I think, did really well to get as far as they did. I think they weren't expected to maybe win the group. I think they were expected to get out of it. So to finish first undefeated in the group, get to the quarterfinals, bowing out to a very good Morocco side. I think that's a really respectable showing from Belgium in this tournament. And moving on to our final matchup of the round of 16, maybe a bit surprising, Morocco only able to beat Argentina 1-0 in each of their legs. So a really good fight by Argentina, but Morocco's strong defense has seen them through. Dad job, how was Argentina? How were those games for you? Yeah, I think that's been like kind of our biggest struggle going through the Confederations Cup and the World Cup, which is scoring goals. We've had Mokro has gone on vacation, Italiano is on vacation, and now Magic's on vacation, so we've really had to just kind of been like every night. I feel like we've had a different strike partnership up there, and just getting that figured out and all the switches and changes we've had to do has been a real struggle for us. But the other night we really got it going. I feel like finally started scoring goals. The defense has been great as always. We've got another two clean sheets. I can't say enough about the defense. I was impressed by Argentina, though, too. It was a team that played a lot in the warm-up to the Cup, and for them to only lose 2 nothing in aggregate to one of the favorites of the whole tournament, is it's pretty impressive. Moving on to the quarterfinals, Spain was able to beat Portugal 3-2 to in the first leg, and then not sure what happened in the second, but Spain whooped up on Portugal, winning 5 nothing in the second. Vape, were you surprised at how easy the second game was compared to the first, which seemed to be at least somewhat tough? No. We should have walked through them the first game, but with some poor defending, um, if I can mention, uh, Quick got wyballed, which has been happening a lot recently. Like, the defense in the first game for us was pretty sloppy. They had two chances and they scored it. But then the second game, we got our shit together and took it seriously. Walked them out of the park. And got your first clean sheet of the tournament. Oh, yeah. Because that's kind of been the theme with Spain is, you know, we're going to score a lot of goals. And then, like, once we have a big lead, like, we'll just have something stupid happen. And we can see the goal. We don't get our clean sheet. And that gets quick mad. So it's kind of funny in the end. I don't think the team's concerned about clean sheets. They just want to win at the end of the day. Well, speaking of clean sheets, we got one of our defensive, strong, strong, de- strong defensive teams. <laughs> the work, Jesus. The work nice. is so good. Uh, nice. Where'd you learn the talk? Australia was able to beat France 1-0 in both of their legs, mirroring what Morocco did to Argentina in the round of 16. Goats, I saw you had an amazing goal. I don't know if it was the first or second game. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah, was that the first or second game? I think it was second. Okay, so that still probably kind of clinched the game for you, but how was France? How did those games go? We went in pretty confident. We knew we were going to win. We just didn't know about how much. We knew the brick wall himself, Rudder, was in goal. 
Shout out to Rudder. Sadly, he's hanging up the PCN jacket. Rest in peace. Retiring. And we thought we were going to get more goals, but they had a really good defense. And Rudder got some clutch saves. But yeah, it was really fun. And they played good. It's really even. The next quarterfinal, Brazil, we beat Germany 3-2 to two in the first leg. And then saw it out with a nice one nothing win in the second leg. Once again, we just, you know, we struggled on the group stage, narrowly got through, but we've really been finding our form this week and got past another really good team in Germany. Well, I don't know how it went, but this is how I look at you guys. Like, in the real World Cup, I picked France after a couple games. It looks like they struggled early on, they picked up steam and just kept improving each game. And that's kind of how I see you guys, Dorsey, in Brazil. Like, yeah, you struggled, but you're getting stronger as the tournament is progressing, which ultimately can, you know, win it for you guys. It's uh, It could be dangerous. I can't wait to actually see the game. I mean, I'm sure we'll be the underdogs again, but now we're just kind of embracing that role, and we've been having fun, and maybe got a little bit lucky to be Denmark, but we really kind of handled Germany. Not that they were a bad team, but we outplayed them, I think, in both games. I think that's probably what's impressive. Germany was one of my picks early before the tournament started you guys are improving you're just getting better obviously to beat germany that that was one of my favorites i do remember in the german game that bale had a good game finally got our strike partnership we kind of played a bunch of combinations that first week and then panic and uh taco bale have really been they've been working well together and uh, that's right panic you know i want to give a shout out to panic never really played with him that much but dude for just coming in and playing striker man he's 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 a good finisher Kudos to him. And then our last quarterfinals matchup, Morocco with another one nothing scoreline, as they love to do against Belgium. But then they were able to finally get some goals, like you were mentioning, 4 nothing in the second game. Yeah, I think I think we just started getting it figured out. I think you know, we had Kessi and Italiano up there, and, and they've really played together quite a bit over the last few seasons. That's the first time they've actually played striker together since we've been going in this. And, you know, the first game they struggled a little bit, but they really started figuring it out in the second game. And they were just banging them in. And it was, I think Italiano had like three assists and Kessie had three goals. So they were really feeding off each other. And then again, the defense was just solid. So nothing was getting through back there. It was really just a full team effort on that one. So with all those games wrapped up now, we can move on to previewing our semifinals. So the first game is going to be Spain against Australia. So Spain, kind of to recap where they're at, they have 36 goals, which is 11 more than anyone else. They have Aztecas with 10 goals, 7 assists, Peanut 6 goals, 6 assists, Evo with 9 goals, and Ozil with 7 goals, 4 assists. So those four have just been getting it done up front, and the defense has been enough. Behind them, they just got their first clean sheet, like I mentioned earlier. So that's definitely the this is the best offensive team in the tournament by quite a while. And then Australia, though, have six clean sheets in the tournament, which is second only to Morocco. So be a nice contrast of offense and defense. Australia's concern, though, is that they only have five goals in the last five games. They're going to need to step it up and score a little bit more if they want to beat Spain. So, Goats. It's about to be a doozy. Yeah, what do you think your chances are? We may be able to pull through. Our friendly record with Spain isn't looking too hot, but uh, I think we got it in us. What's going to be more important, do you think? Stopping Spain or finding a way to score some goals? Oh, God. Uh, probably stopping Spain. The goal scoring just comes with just passing back and forth, knowing when to pass, and just, you know, going strong. We're hoping. I'm going to say it's going to be a cakewalk for Spain. <laughs> Are there any legit concerns about overconfidence in Spain? No, nah, our expectations to make the final, so treat it like every other game. You know, nice and simple. Yeah. And Ghost, just remember, you come down my side, you're getting clamped, boy. Hey, yeah, I doubt I'm playing. True, you are pretty bad. Yeah, I do think this is the best team you've played in the knockouts. Egypt, like I mentioned, was that's a pretty easy matchup just because they didn't have a full squad. And Portugal was a solid team, but I don't think that's a team anyone really thought was going to go all the way. And I think Australia is a team that potentially could win it all, so I'll be playing in the other games, but I'm definitely going to go back and watch. Anyone else got any ideas of how it's going to go down? <laughs> I don't know. Spain has been strong the whole way, and I hope Australia wins just because they beat us. You played both teams, so like, what do you think? Australia was more of a 
surprise. I don't feel like they practice as much. I feel like we played like when Uruguay played a lot of matches with Spain. It feels like they practice more, but they beat us kind of like Germany beat us quite often. So did Spain. And uh, Australia was somewhat new, but the way they played us was really good. And then the way they performed, you know, to get to this point, Australia has just kind of came to the table and performed. But I can't argue against Spain because their numbers have been so good the whole tournament. So if I had to pick one, I would pick Spain, but I'm rooting for Australia. I think that Spain will come out, probably go up by three, four goals in the first leg and then toast in the second. Oof. Spain is loaded. In the second semifinal, we have Brazil against Morocco, two teams from Group A meeting up again. Brazil have been the underdog of the knockouts for sure, a four seed making all the way to the semifinals, back-to-back upsets against Denmark and Germany. I think my favorite stat when I was looking at this, kind of looking at key players and things, was that there really wasn't a standout player from Brazil. Everyone has done their part. We've had nine man of the matches in nine games. It's been strikers, it's been midfielders, it's been defenders, it's been the goalie. It's not that we've always been outstanding, but it's just that we've had a consistent, I think, level of performance from everyone. And, you know, I don't know about you guys, Will and Jayway, but I think that's been the key for us. We've been playing better as a team as it's gone along, but there hasn't been one player carrying us. Yeah, I would agree with that. We still like lack a little bit of that chemistry and lack a little bit of that edge sometimes in our games. But for the most part, we're pretty solid and a lot of these guys have you know played other leagues and stuff like that so we have a lot of experience in the team and a lot of these guys are good players in pcn so it was bound to work out eventually you know with just the amount of talent we had alone but there was a whole lot of you know growing pains that came along with (laughs) this team that's for sure i actually would agree with a lot of that i think that it's kind of like our highest of highs doesn't happen that often but it could happen but our lowest of lows isn't that low. So, and, and it's actually kind of not that bad. And that's what's really kept us in a lot of games. And then we'll go and we'll score a goal kind of off chance. I mean, if you watched our games, you probably wouldn't see some amazing team right now. But we just don't make a million mistakes. I think you guys would probably agree with that. We just don't make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. And we're very consistent and solid, for sure. Can you turn your blinker off? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going Sorry. Left or right. that what that was the yeah, f- sound like fucking magic I'm driving dude i had to leave with this fucking oh, controller God. clicking the entire time oh <laughs> y'all are jesus um, he picks up everything yeah so as we mentioned earlier morocco the key for them has obviously been that defense with seven clean sheets in nine games that's really unbelievable but they have struggled to score and really with kessie's kind of been the main man as probably not too surprising for some people with six goals, 15 key passes. But I think what's really big for Sunday is that Mokro is going to be back. Do you think he's really going to make the difference for you guys in your semifinal against Brazil? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Mokro is such a difference maker, whether he's, you know, on the right side or at striker, he just, he's such a creative player and great striker as well. So anytime he's on the field, he's a huge difference maker. And we're definitely going to be looking forward to having him back. In our first game, I think you guys had, I think, nine. And, you know, we were still figuring things out at that point with Brazil. But that was our worst game of the tournament, I think. I mean, maybe not even just our worst, but it was only 2 nothing. But, like, we just never – we were awful. I mean, you guys just destroyed us. So I'm hoping that our better play will make it at least an interesting game. We've surprised ourselves beating Denmark and Germany to an extent. So I think at this point, we know we're the underdog, but we're also – we're not intimidated, and just for us, we just know we got to get a, a couple goals on the board, which is not going to be an easy task. For sure, you guys have a ton of talent, too. I, I think you've kind of had the same issues with people showing up and everybody being there that we've had, so just getting that chemistry going. But the talent you guys have got, I don't see you guys as an underdog at all. I know you're a great team, and we're going to have to play our best to beat you, for sure. We go through spells where we just can't score and we don't generate much offense. And that's really going to be an issue whenever we're playing against a team like Morocco that can really defend. And I'm really worried about what we can generate on the offensive end. We'll hold ourselves, uh, you know, okay on, on defense, I feel. We haven't been blown out in any part of this tournament, and I don't see that happening now. But, you know, it, it's a game where I'm going to go in expecting a tough game, but knowing it's possible. And so this should be a really good matchup. 
just like I've said, and as far as, I mean, it's kind of like what you just said, Dorsey, is that regardless, you know, they are going to be the favorites. I think that, I think we're going to be in the game, though, yeah. just because that's just kind of how we've played. Like, while we haven't been the best, we've always been in every game. So I think we'll be in the game, and, you know, it's FIFA. It's FIFA is is a big part of why we got through the Denmark. We got a bit fortunate on our third goal, and that's why we're still here. And sometimes you just need a little bit of luck. Well, my question is, can Brazil score? Because that's all I think of. If I was in, you know, Brazil's spot, I'd be thinking, how are we going to score? Like, how is that going to come about? Because their defense, by far, that's the biggest thing. But going 1-0 and 1-0, their offense, like you said, has can struggle. So that's what I look at. So, everyone, let's kind of run through and just give your prediction for the final and who you think is going to win. I will start it off, and I'm going to be a homer, and I'm going to go big. <laughs> I'm going to say Brazil beats Morocco. Brazil beats Spain. We're going to be partying in Copacabana, baby. I don't know if I have faith, you know? I'm a faithful guy, but uh, I think it's about to be Spain-Morocco. And who's winning it? Oh, I say Morocco. Yeah. All right. Morocco. Y'all are wild. If I had to go with it, Spain's going to take it, and they're going uh, to beat out Morocco. Holy shit, I can agree with AJ for once. Well, I mean, it just the stats say so, and I'm an honest man. But my heart is with Australia and Brazil. I appreciate you, too. I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like if something bad goes wrong at all for Spain, all hell is going to break loose, and that team is going to lose every bit of morale they have the, at this the point. The ego's about to blow up. Yeah, way too many egos and way too many people that think they're way better than they are. If something goes wrong, it's going to be a fucking issue. So I think that if Morocco can muster up you know, some goals, I don't think Spain will score a whole lot. I think it's going to be Spain and Morocco in the final. And I'm going to go ahead and say Morocco wins it 3-1. I'm going to go Brazil and Spain. And Brazil wins 2-1. Oh, I like it. Before we get out of here, we will run through the kind of leading stat people. Top scorers could actually be someone who's out of the tournament. Stay High is leading in the Golden Boot Race with 12. Lobo from Belgium has 11. And then Misfit, Begod, and Aztecas all have 10. Aztecas, the only one in the top five who is still playing. He's going to have to score at least three goals to go ahead and clinch that. Top assisters, Lucid Control from Portugal with 8. And then Aztecas with 7. Liverpool, Matt Kevin, Peanut from Spain with 6 as well. Top key passers, it's Lucid Control again from Portugal with 24. Really good tournament from him. Someone I've seen around for a long time, but i would never seen him at the top of the charts for the creative stuff. So really, really well done by him. Obviously setting up Stay High. And then behind him, three Spain players in the key pass race. Aztecas, Peanut, Nozel. Top tacklers, Vision from Portugal with 17. Myself with 15. And then Rambo in just three games with 14 tackles in third. Top interceptors, somehow, myself again with 30. Killer Albino and Snowboarder with 25 and 24 from Portugal. And then Will in fourth with 22. And then top keepers, we got Free Kick in the lead with 54 saves. Lazy Sniper from Switzerland with 41. And DJ Rod in third with 40 from Spain. So I'm interested to see who finishes top of the marks in all those categories. And then who makes our 11-man team of the tournament, as well as who gets the golden ball for best player. Any predictions on best player overall? Aztecas would have to be in in the conversation. Top goal scorer for the team that, you know, has a chance to win at this point. So I would say... Yeah, uh, case in point right there. So um, if Spain were to win, I would have to say Aztecas is my favorite. If Brazil wins, I don't know, Dorsey, you've got some convincing stats. So does Free Kick with his saves. So... It just depends on who wins, in my opinion. It has to be someone from the winning team. I think if it's not kind of someone like Aztecas from Spain, if it's someone from Australia or Morocco, I'm thinking maybe one of those defenders. It's kind of hard to just look at the stats and know who's been the best when both of those defenses have been so good. But, you know, when you keep that many clean sheets in a tournament, I feel like it almost has to go to one of the defenders. Is there anyone from Morocco, especially in that defense, that you think has kind of been the standout player or has it kind of been just a group effort and you know any two or three or four guys could be in that conversation i think for the standout for me is 
fresh beans back there. I did not know that he was such a good center back. He's been fantastic. Like I knew Matias and Hernandez, Jimmy were all going to be great. But I'd never really seen Beans play in a three-back, and I was kind of concerned with it at first. He's just been absolutely phenomenal back there, and that was probably the most surprising one to me. He said, I expected it from the other three guys because they're always so consistent and they're great. Beans was just, he really stepped up and has just been locking it down back there. I think the overall chemistry that we have on defense has been great. I really enjoy playing DM beside Jimmy, too. We just really we work well together and cover each other, and it's been really great working with those guys, playing with them. Go who would you say has kind of been the the MVP on Australia so far? If there is one, or if it's just been a couple? Oh no, I'd probably say our new striker, A One Boss. You know, he's really putting in that work. Oh yeah, I think he's new to PCN too, or relatively new, because he's a uh, Kufvelli's friend, so he brought him on to Australia. Yeah. But yeah, he's putting in them work. And then the defense has just been a group effort. Oh, yeah. Peanut dunks on everyone, never gets wide balled. <laughs> but, yeah, overall, yeah, I'd say uh, A1 Boss. Him and uh, A1 Boss go up top, make a good team. Well, looking forward to these games on Sunday. Uh, we will definitely have some streams going for the semis, which are going to be at 8 and 8.30, and then we're going to have our final at 9 o'clock. So hopefully everyone will tune in. And then we'll be back next week with our last podcast of FIFA 18. We will wrap up the World Cup. Maybe talk about some plans. Maybe just talk about the whole FIFA as a whole a little bit and then talk about some plans for Season 9. It'll probably be a little more informal podcast than we're used to. We may have, we'll try to have an interview as well. So until then, hope everyone has a good one. And uh, thanks everyone for coming on. And before we get out of here, just want to include a couple of bloopers from the recording. I think some people were having some struggles, and it was pretty entertaining, so I hope you guys enjoy. Hey, real quick, Dorothy. <laughs> so I just messaged Will. <laughs> Me and Will, Will and I, and you did it too, we were all just talking about the Germany match. We weren't talking about the Denmark match. No. Like, we mixed it all up. I was talking about Denmark. Uh, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. That was all the Germany stuff. Yeah, we were talking about the game last night. Yeah, yes. Oh, I you... have no clue about, about what happened on Sunday. No fucking clue. I mean, yeah. Well, no, okay. But the possible goal, goal was against was Denmark. That was Denmark. What? Denmark. Yeah, it was. Wasn't it? We last Germany. Time? No, we no, beat Germany four to two in aggregate. We didn't go to through it. That was. <sighs> Because we won really? three to two. <laughs> you guys are retarded. I'm not even on either teams, and I knew what happened. Oh my god! No, we're fine. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. I don't know what happened. Let me ask. Let me ask. Dorsey, the second game versus Germany yesterday. That's the one where they kicked the ball back and it no. went off the post. That correct? was correct. Oh Jayway, are you? How Jayway, drunk are that you right was now? Sunday. Still have one fourteen gin and tonic. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Jayway, you can't be that drunk yet. <laughs> All right, and I know. Oh yeah, AJ hasn't even started talking yet. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, baby. I gave you. about them. Okay, so Germany. Okay, let, let me talk about the Germany game real quick. So you okay. Can talk. All right. So we won the yes, first game yes. three to two. It was back and forth. We um. I think we got a, we got a late goal on him, and then the second game was when Taco scored. We he stole the ball off like a center back, ran and scored that. Uh, oh yeah, okay. With that breakaway goal, Will. and then we just Will, it down. You, My bad, Will. My bad. Jesus. Will. We got <laughs> God damn. All right. This episode of the PCN Podcast is brought to you by the yeah. hashtag AJ Out yeah. Movement. Broadcast. It's a podcast. Yeah. What? Broadcast. I said podcast. You said broadcast. Broadcast. I didn't say broadcast. I was retarded. You do know I'm recording. I didn't. I didn't say I that. All right. If I did, then fuck. Take two. Go ahead. <clears throat> this episode of the PCN Pro- Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk can't today, talk guys. Us. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> you you better leave all of this in.